Is this thing on? Yes. Hello, welcome to your 18th Roblox Lua GUI scripting tutorial. The third take of it, in fact. The first time my dog disrupted the video. The second time, just a minute ago, I forgot to even open my recorder. And now I know it's on and I know I'm recording. So, uh, okay, today I'm going to show you guys about UI constraints. This, These are some cool new objects that Roblox recently introduced for organizing your user interfaces better. They are meant for use inside of a frame, although you can insert them into scrolling frames and text objects, but... I don't see why you would want to insert them into a text object, like a text label, button box, etc, etc. And they don't mix with scrolling frames very well at all. They're very buggy when you use them in a scrolling frame. Okay. So, I'm going to insert a bunch of text labels into here. And... I can go to insert object, I can insert an aspect ratio constraint, grid layout, list layout, size constraint, constraint, text size constraint. We'll start with aspect ratio constraint. So this is one of the constraints that is applied to uh, the parent of itself as opposed to UI or a grid layout and list layout where it's applied to the children of the parent and not just the parent. Uh, this sort of limits the aspect ratio of the... it sort of limits the size of the frame almost the same way size constraint does. I'm probably... I might be explaining this very wrong but it helps in scaling your elements. When I change this aspect ratio uh, sort of like using scale uh, just limits the it limits how it's scaled uh, so you see when I change the property sort of scales in a different way. Uh, fit within max size or scale within parent size. Scaling with parent size is, well, this would be scaled to the whole game window since it's just parented to a screen GUI. So I'm going to move on, control Z, to the next one, which is a grid layout. So, as you can see, when I insert it, and when I take it out, when I insert it, it sorts them, all the children of the parent element, into a grid layout, and I can take it away, and it'll put them back where they were. So the main properties here are cell padding and cell size. Cell padding and cell size are udim2 values, so they work sort of the same way as position size. There's scale and offset, which is pixels. So we can change that to zero, and they won't, and they'll be stuck right together on the x-axis and the y-axis here. We can change that to. Uh, oops. Okay, this is better. We can change this to a percentage using scale. Uh, cell size, that's the size of all your cells. The position and size properties are overridden by the UI grid layout, so you can't set them manually. You have these properties. Fill direction, you can be horizontal or vertical. Horizontal alignment, left, center, or right. That all looks really weird, probably because my frame isn't that big. Start corner can be top left, bottom left, bottom right, blah blah blah. Vertical alignment, 
center, bottom, or top. And of course, that looks weird too. It doesn't even display well. Yeah, these can. These are sort of buggy. They're new. Uh, yeah. Like I said, they don't work with scrolling frames very well. Fill direction max cells is uh, how many cells are in a row before it starts a new row. If it's set to zero, then uh, it just sort of fills until it runs out of room. Then it starts a new row. We can set it to one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. And if we set it to eight, it doesn't matter because one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. We only have seven elements. And there's no room for it there anyway, I suppose. Set that back to zero. Uh, so in addition to grid layout, there's also list layout. You can make that horizontal or vertical with the fill direction. Horizontal alignment, you can choose where to align it. Vertical alignment, bottom, center, top. Uh, the grid layout and the list layout are the only constraints to have a sort order property. Um, to so it can be either name, it'll sort them by name, or you can set a custom function to sort them by, which you use by a method uh, called set custom sort function, I believe. Yeah. It works just like uh, table.sort would. Uh, so on a table, so you would sort of set it the same way you can imagine these as a table when you're doing that, I guess. Uh, size constraint. I believe this is applied to the parent of the constraint. Uh, yeah. <coughs> it limits the max size in, I suppose, pixels. You can also set the minimum size. Uh, you can see before I set it, the absolute size in pixels was 824 by 589, and now it's 500 by 500 since that's what I said. Uh, inf obviously means infinity. Uh, text size constraint. This is um, actually. I'm gonna insert a list layout, and now I'm going to insert a text size constraint. I'm going to insert this in each one of the text labels. Max text size, let's say, 10. So, um, yeah. I think their text size is 14 right now. Set it to 100, make the minimum 50. So, yeah, it pushes their minimum and maximum around uh, 1, 14. So, uh, you put this at, uh, as a child of a text object, a text label, a button, or box, and it, you can play with their minimum and maximum text size. So these you new UI constraints, they they're I think they're gonna make designing a lot easier. You could still do this kind of thing with pure code previously, but this just makes it a lot easier. Uh, you can use these for a variety of things. Uh, uh, shop, for instance, probably is the most applicable use that I can think of. I'm pretty sure they would also work on billboards and surface GUIs. Uh, uh, stretching feels good. But I have not tried that, so you guys can experiment with that. That ought to be pretty cool. Um, I think I'm going to make my next video on hmm, ordered data stores. I might use a list layout in... <laughs> in a frame to 
display a leaderboard with an order data store. I'll explain that. I'll cross that bridge when we get to it. So until next time, guys. Bye.